All right, joining us now, we don't get a lot of college basketball coaches, but I, I think we found the right one. There's no run that I'm more into right now than NC State's run, and, and of course their head coach is Kevin Keats. Coach Keats, how you doing? Do you finally get a chance to, to catch a breather, you and the players, after this, this run of seven postseason games in 12 days? You know, when you get this deep in March, you shouldn't expect any type of breather. Uh, yeah. I'm operating on four hours of sleep. That's a little bit below my average, and you know um, I'm excited. I mean, what a you know great March that we've had. When you just think about the ACC and then into the NCAA, it's been a really wonderful ride for us. When you come out of that first round, or when you're preparing for the first round, uh, there's really no like in football. There, there's nothing like March Madness, where you know you're going to have time to prep for your next opponent. Do you guys have people working on Oakland and Kentucky? Uh, do you have kind of scouting reports on everybody you could play in a weekend where you're going to have back-to-back -back games like that? How do you prepare for that next game without losing focus? So what happens is, um, you know, when you get on Selection Sunday, you find out who you're going to play. Yeah. Everybody's it's such an incredible day, and all of the coaches out the selection Sunday, we all go back to the office, <laughs> uh -huh. and we start working on obviously, uh, you know, Texas Tech. We're calling around people who played them, and then so one assistant coach will take that scout, and then you, you know, we, what we do is we got two other assistant coaches. They will one will start concentrating on Oakland, and then the other one will start concentrating on Kentucky, and that's kind of how you do it. I, I couldn't go too long without asking about DJ Burns. He's been kind of the, the story on this run. And I think for me, he's got such a unique build. He reminds me of a football player. And you watch him, and if you don't know his, his size and, or his height and weight, I'm thinking, that's hey, a six foot six guy, six foot seven. But he's all of six nine. Is, the, is, is that accurate? And 300 pounds. Is, and, and what do you think that poses uh, for people from a, from a differentiating factor perspective I mean you don't see a lot of bigs like him well he is 6'9 and um, I think you're right I'm I, I can say this to you guys I'm glad he's on my team uh -huh. you know he is um, you know he's very light on his feet he's got a great touch and I don't know how much you guys have seen a, of lefty post guys he's a lefty post guy that can really score and he's a super passer now He's become a really good passer over the last year. If you go back and look to his assist to turnover ratios from last year, was just okay. So we worked really hard to increase his passing because we knew he would get so much attention and draw so much, uh, so many uh, double teams. But I mean, you're talking about the the future mayor of Raleigh, North Carolina, right now. I mean, he is. Um, <laughs> they love him around here. You're talking about the future dancing with the stars guy. You know, yeah. because of his light footwork, he's that type of dude now. Yeah. Coach, I, I don't want to be in your business, but the ACC Tournament Championship got you a $110,000 bonus, triggered a two-year extension and a $400,000 raise. The question is, will you be sending a Christmas card to Tony Bennett <laughs> for not fouling <laughs> up three with under five seconds to go? No, listen, Tony has his own money. Have you, have you seen that contract? <laughs> yeah. He, yeah, listen, that, that, Tony's a great coach now, and he's won a national championship. You ought to look at that contract when he won that national championship, but I will not be sending any money to Tony Bennett. Uh, Tony, <laughs> he is going to be fine, and he's a great coach. So don't you start that up fouling and don't foul and all that stuff. <laughs> Hey, we're just glad that Michael O'Connor just got that shot off and made it. That's what we're happy with. Well, congrats on the on the extension. I mean, that's got to be such a great way to earn it. Uh, you know, you, you walk off the court and you're like, oh, we did it. And you're going to be around. So, I mean, you, you get ready for the tournament. Obviously, you talk about prepping for Oakland, prepping for Kentucky. But obviously, Oakland's got that prototypical difference maker outside the arc, the guy that's been knocking down a bunch of shots in Golki. I mean, this guy, you know, he's coming off the screens 100 miles an hour catching and drilling these shots, and I'm wondering how much goes into preparing for that one guy that can get hot, and, and how did you guys plan to defend him? Well, I mean, if you watched him, and I, would, I know America did against Kentucky, I mean, he was just unbelievable. And, and that being said, he still ended up with six against us. Um, yeah. We wanted to 
you know, we know we couldn't stop him from taking shots because he takes deep shots. He comes off stagger screens. He shoots way beyond the NBA line. But we wanted to make sure he didn't shoot at such a great percentage. I mean, the Kentucky game, you know, told you everything you need to know. He was 10 for 20, shot 50% from three, and they were backbreakers. Um, but what we had to warn our team against is it's crazy because Oakland's so good. He's their third leading scorer. Um, right. You know, you look at their 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 team, you know, they got a couple guys that were all conference, and he wasn't one of them, but a very good player who we respected. Um, we did a great job on him, but not so much their four man. Trey kicked our butt. I mean, he had 30 points, and we had no answer. And, you know, it's, a, it's an Oakland team that, you know, everybody's going to, you know, talk about, you know, Kentucky losing in the first round. They're good. They were older. They were smarter. They know how to play. They can make shots. They can score inside out. And uh, I'm just happy that our guys locked in with one day prep. Well, actually, you know, one day in between prep and, and did a good job of defending the three-point line. And we got out of there with a good win. How much you talk about older, more experienced players, how much does hitting the portal help in that regard? And, and you know, we always hear everything changes in March. And I, who would know better than, than a coach who's, who's, who's coached in March? But on top of that, I feel like there have been changes in the landscape with NIL and with the transfer portal. And how has that impacted the, the style of play and just some of the factors in March, including experience? It's changed everything. Um, you know, I'll start on the front end. And so, you know, for us, example, we got a few transfers. We lost 34 points in our two guards into Quavion Smith and Jock L. Joyner. And we had to go out in the portal and we had to find some guys, Michael O'Connor, DJ Horn, uh, guys that can come in and help our team. We had Casey Morsell and DJ Burns returning. But it takes a little time. And, and that's the hardest thing for fans to understand you know, the year before, we clicked a little bit quicker because we had the opportunity to go to Bahamas and, you know, take a foreign trip and had 10 practices and, and played two different games. But if you don't get that, it's going to take some time. And I know people said the non-conference and all of that. It took us a long time to get on the same page. It took us a long time for to guys to have a voice. And now you're kind of seeing it. And sometimes you run out of time. But chemistry is real. Um, you have to. You know, I don't, in today's game, it's really, really hard to win with young guys right now. And we've got some talented young guys. And But if you get any more than, you know, three freshmen playing, it's really tough. And, you know, when we try to be very picky, we had one freshman um, who was playing really good basketball for us and he's going to be a really good player. But a lot of teams have older, experienced guys. And when you see teams like Oakland who are mid-major, you're typically going to see some older guys, juniors and seniors, and some of them are transfers. Coach Marquette's up next in the Sweet 16. Have you talked to your guys at all about 1983? That was a sixth seed. Lorenzo Charles, Derek Wittenberg, they go on a magical run. Have you, have you had any time to talk to your team about the, uh, the big picture of all this? You know, I haven't because, man, you guys get this before they do. I we're going I'm, when I get off of this call, I'm going to practice. I haven't seen them today. You know, mm -hmm. we got back Saturday <laughs> late on Sunday morning, and I, I'm talking to you. And now I got some good tips from you guys. I can talk about '83 and all that stuff there now. Go. I got them. I got them in 30 minutes. And no, we, you know, we don't. You know, the great thing about our '74 and '83 championship is that we celebrated all year long, and so they know about it. Um, you know, we've had both teams on campus this year, and uh, we've we've been able to hang out with those guys. And so it's not something that I have to bring up; it's something that we always um, talk about because it's part of our history. Well, DJ Burns, my last question is: if he if he was going to play in the NFL, which position do you think he's going to play? Because some football guys like me, we're looking at DJ Burns and saying he might be able to, to double dip here. Yeah, I mean, somebody would probably say a defensive tackle. Um, yeah, he, I think he, he might he be will think, he, he think he, He'll think that he's a tight end. I mean, he would. <laughs> he I mean, wants the ball. <laughs> yeah, he wants to rock. You know, he wants to rock. He'll think he'll – if I asked him, he'll swear up and down he's a tight end. And, you know, uh, he, he would say he can catch, he can block, he can run. I don't believe that, but he'll say that. Okay. Coach, when you're when you're pissed off at the officials, you you do my favorite thing of all the coaches. Or <laughs> after you've said your piece, you will just you'll lean back on the scorer's table 
cross your arms and just sort of smile. And I think that's the coolest way to be. <laughs> like, you know I'm upset, but I'm not going to give you the, the credit for my being upset. Well, you know, I'm not even going to call it upset. We have some good conversations over there. And uh -huh. most time it's, it's most time we got to agree to disagree. And the other thing I do when I'm pissed off at him, I just say, you know what? All right, I'm just going to throw the ball inside the DJ Burns and we're going to make you make a call. Somebody's got to make a call. <laughs> I love that. Uh, Coach game, Kevin man. Keats, uh, NC State Wolfpack, making a great run. We are uh, pulling for y'all, man. Uh, go ACC. Yeah, Thank keep going, Coach. In the tourney. Uh, thanks for coming on. Go win it all. Time. Hey, hey, guys, thanks for having, you, having me. And, and look, you can – I know that you guys are Virginia fans, but, man, for right now – I'm asking you just to be an uh, NC State fan. That's all. I'm asking you that. We're behind you. We're behind you. Right. We got you. Yeah, Go we got you. Thank you, guys. All right, dude.